So hi there, um, welcome to my new level loader, which is available on the Asset Store for the uh, massive price of $5. Um, in this video, we're just gonna take a quick look at how you set it up and what it can do. Uh, so we'll start off, right, I don't have the uh, level loader at the moment. I'm sure you're all familiar with this. You've got some sort of menu, you go to load your level and everything locks up. You can't do anything. And there's no indication that it's loading, no nothing, and you're done. You're frozen until the level loads up. And you see, I've just quickly made a basic level to demonstrate it. Um, again, if I press L, I'll go back to the menu. Uh, obviously, there's no objects in this, so that didn't take very long to load up. Uh, but we want a nice loading screen. Every single game I know of has loading screens, so let's see how we do it. Now, uh, when you download it, you'll end up with this, this level loader example here. You'll have everything in here, apart from that image. Can't include images. That aren't mine on the asset star. Um, so, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go to this prefab folder and you want to drag the level loader in it. Now you want to put this in your main menu or your point of entry for your game. It's very important that. Um, and so once you've uh, put it in, you then start going through it so you can set your background color. Remember to make sure it's not transparent. Uh, you can have any background color you want. If you want to have a texture, you can put a texture in there. Also supports transparency, so you can have a transparent texture in there and then the uh, background color will show up behind it. Choose what text you want it to say. You can choose where about to put the uh, label location. You can also configure the label style here, so you can change the text color, uh, text size, font, all that kind of things. And you can also choose whether to hide the cursor or not. Um, so once you've got the level loader configured, you then there's just a little bit of coding. So before, I'm sure that we use, uh, as you're familiar with, we use application.load level, and you either put in a sh the string name of the level, or you put in the integer ID. Uh, this can accept either, my level loader. Um, so to actually load a level, you want to call level loader dot instance dot load level, and then the uh, name or ID of the level you want to do. And uh, well, that's it for actually loading the level. That's all you've uh, got to do. But um, if you want to use uh, some of the extra features, though, there's a little bit more to do. Um, like first of all, you might want to um, you might want to enable the UI once it's finished loading. Uh, in, that, in that case, you can assign methods to get called once a level load is finished, and you can use that using level load.instance stop assign finish calling uh, assigned finished loading callback, and then you just pass in the uh, method that you want to get executed once it's finished. Um, you see, I don't have anything in that method there, no anything, but it will get called, and we'll see that in a second in a different one. Um, so that's on my main menu and point of entry. On the actual level, I've got my manager. Again, we're calling application.load level. Um, again, and then we want to call level loader.instance. I'll show you what that 2.0f does in a sec. Uh, and again, we're going to assign a callback function. Again, so this is where we'll see. We'll actually see something happen here. We'll log to the uh, debug that the UI has been enabled. Um, the main case I can see you want to use is you'd set the time scale to zero before you start loading, and then you would reset it back to one in your finished loading callback function. And uh, that'd stop anything being executed in the background. Uh, because you can also, some scripts, for example, and your start function might take a while to execute. So the level could be loaded, but your scripts could still be executing. And uh, so you don't want anything to happen until everything's done and everything's ready. And then so it's setting the time scale once it's finished loading and uh, do that. Um, so to show you as well, these uh, functions that might take a while here, I'm just simulating some work and I'm just on the thread to sleep for a second. And you can see they're being executed in a start function. Now you don't want that. Uh, you want to register any uh, actions that you want to get loaded uh, using level instance dot register action. And then you pass it the name of the function and you can also pass it a string which will uh, update the loading screen, whatever it's doing. And uh, you want to replace these in the await level in the awake function, sorry. Uh, same with uh, the finish loading callbacks. You always want to place these in the awake method. Um, so we'll go through. So you see, we've got a bit. Of, we've got uh, three scripts where we're going to do some loading. Uh, so yeah, we'll just saw that, and uh, that's it. That's all there is to it. So you can see now, if we go back, uh, we play now. We click load level. See there, we're loading level, it's loading our functions, and there it's coming up with a description that we put in, so you could put loading grid, or loading nav mesh, or put loading whatever you want, really. And you can see there, our callback function has been called, our UI is enabled. Um, that's all there is to it, really. There's a few other nice added features of it. Um, I'll say you only ever want to have one instance of level loader, it always wants to be in your point of entry. 
But uh, when you're working on a level, you don't want to have to keep switching between your level and the main UI. You want to be able to just click play and just start loading up the level. And that's still absolutely fine. That won't uh, be any problem at all, even though we're calling level loader.instance here and stuff like that, and we don't actually have the object. It'll handle it absolutely fine. Uh, your functions will still get executed. You see here, it's why it's taking a time to uh, load up because of those start functions. But we're still loading. We don't get any errors. You can, applications still work perfectly fine. See, if I press L to go back to the loading screen, uh, the main menu, sorry, and now we click the level, our loading screen's back with us now. Um, so that's one of the nice features. You can still, you don't have to reload your main menu every time you want to play it. Um, I'll, I'll show you AF so we can also put images on it. Go on. There we go. Uh, I'll change the label color actually because it doesn't stand very out. Uh, it doesn't stand out very well against that image. Uh, so you can see here, it's so now when we click load level. There we go, we've got our image that appears. And again, it still shows our, uh, our load script. So another function I want to show you as well is that so now when we want to go back to the main menu, you see here when I press L. Uh, it appears, but only for a very split second. Now, on a lot of level loaders I've seen, uh, you usually want to display some sort of information to the user, or you know, give them something to read. Uh, but obviously, in that case, they'd have no chance of reading it. Uh, so when you call level loader load instance after the integer or string for the level, uh, you can also define a minimum duration for it to appear. So you see, I've set it for two seconds. Uh, so I go into it, press load level, and wait for this to finish. You see, now when I press L to load back the main menu, it'll appear for two seconds. Um, so that's all it. Uh, you see here, even though we've gone, even though we started off in the main menu, we switched to another scene and then we went back into the main menu. We still only have one instance of a level loader, so you can switch between as many scenes as you want as many times. It won't trip over itself, it'll always be all right. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, so there's a pro version going to come out soon coming up soon, which will uh, support asynchronous loading, so you'll have a progress bar displaying how much is loaded. I'm also going to put in some transition animations, so fading in, fading out, and things like that. Uh, but yeah, this basic version, $75 on the asset store. If you have any problems with all of it or any questions, just let me know. Thanks for watching.